Papa finally named one of his sons after him. Why me, I don't know. I was called Simi as well as Totoy. When I entered the first grade, Papa made me wear shoes, a long sleeve shirt, and a tie every day to school. Five ties, one for each a day. There were the three little pigs and other cartoon characters. As we grew up, Papa used to send Benny and I to the local tailor and we had our trousers tailor-made. On graduation and a year at the University of Hawaii, I left to join Rosa and her family in San Bernardino, California. I attended college there and when the Korean War broke out, I volunteered to join the Air Force instead of the Army. I met and married Elena Rodriguez and we became an Air Force family, traveling to Spain, Arizona, Hawaii, California, Colorado, Philippines, and Texas. Elena gave me three children, Elaine, Paul, and Gregory. Upon retirement from the Air Force, we moved to North Highlands, California, and I worked for the McJoy School of Law. I retired after 15 years because I too have problems with my arteries, I had to undergo two operations. I guess the disease is in our genes, and future generations should be aware of it. Laura is pictured in this class picture, the second from the left on the first row. Laura was born on November 16th, 1931, and I was born on November 21st, 1929. Laureen, as her family calls her, and I celebrated our birthdays together on November 27th. He saved Mama and Papa some money with all the other birthdays that they had to be celebrated. Of course, sometimes it coincides with the Thanksgiving holiday, which made our parents even more thankful. Upon graduation, Laura worked for the Army Exchange Service, where she met Novino Robert Ordones. They were married, and after Robert was discharged from the Army, he worked for the Navy as a civil service employee. Because the Navy was also downsizing, Bobby applied for a position at the air base in San Bernardino, California. He and Laura had three children, Lorena, Patrick, and Robert. He also moved the family to Ogden, Utah, Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, Ohio, and Colorado Springs, Colorado, where promotion opportunities were available for him. Bobby died of a heart attack soon after moving to Colorado. Laura still resides in Colorado Springs and has never remarried. Next came Helen. She was a good-natured one of the family, and she had a great sense of humor. When Helen was about five years old, she had an accident. The wire, which was inside of her teddy bear's arm, came loose, and it became a hook, which caught her under her eyelid. We couldn't get it out, so Papa calmly cut the wire and rushed her to the hospital. When she came home, it was as if nothing happened. It took her a long time to gain confidence in driving a car. While still in high school, she and her girlfriend cut class and went joyriding in her friend's uncle's car. Helen was driving. She ran into the plantation store and she did not have a driver's license. Good thing 
and Count Teodoro worked for the plantation, and he sort of smoothed things out for her. When we were stationed in Hawaii, she would pile all her kids very early in the morning when there were no cars on the road and the cops were not around. She would drive to our home and they slept in the car until the sun came up and we were awake. She was the good sport of the family and she liked to play with the kids. She married Daniel Segovia Sr. but were later divorced. Helen suffered from diabetes, heart problems and cancer. She died on December 30, 1993 and is survived by her children, Luis, Daniel Jr., Leonard, Lydia, Lorenzo, and Edward. Then came Edward. Edward was born in Haleiwa on April 16, 1935. When he was old enough, he was next in line to do home chores, since Benny and I were no longer living at home. He attended and graduated from the schools as the rest of us kids. And upon graduation, he joined the Air Force and was assigned duties as an air policeman. He eventually was stationed in Germany, and his duties took him to Holland, where he met and married Renee Steenhard. He was then stationed in California and then to McCord Air Force Base in the state of Washington. Ed and Renee had seven children, David, Stephen, Corrine, Wayne, Michael, Kenneth, and Raymond. Ed was medically discharged from the Air Force because of a heart condition, that family disease again. He had to undergo arterial bypass operation and in need of a heart transplant. Ed and Renee would eventually divorce and he moved to California, leaving his family in Washington. He was an avid hunter and fisherman, even though he was hampered by his heart condition. Ed was also a gambler and he knew that he could never receive a heart transplant and he told me that he is taking a gamble when he requested for a bypass operation. He never recovered from this second arterial bypass surgery. And a month later, on June 21st, 1990, he passed on. It's been said that families come together on two occasions when there's a wedding or a death. Our brother Edward brought the family together when he died in June 1990. The services were held in Sacramento and everyone, before they went on their separate ways, had breakfast at my home. The second generation cousins brought up the idea that they should all meet again. The cousins included the Reyes, the Espiritus, the Candelisas, Segovias, and Teberangos, and they decided on their family reunion to be held on July 4, 1992, in Hawaii, hosted by the cousins in Hawaii. And that was a great success. Since then, family reunions have been held in Hawaii, Sacramento, California, Minneapolis, Minnesota, San Diego, California, Colorado Springs, Colorado, and Seattle, Washington. Gonzalo was the last of the living sons. When he graduated from high school, he joined the Air Force and he married his childhood sweetheart, Mililani Cooney. And they had Gonzalo Jr., Glenn, Gail, Gerald, Jean, and Gloria. While in the Air Force, he opted for a discharge from the service so as to better care for his large family. He worked in Riverside, California, manufacturing industrial air conditioning 
He had to work with asbestos sheets, and it is assumed later that asbestos caused a cancer in his lungs. He died on September 8, 1969. Gonzalo, along with his brothers, Coyang, Benigno, and Edward, are all resting at the Punchbowl Cemetery. Mililani died in San Bernardino, and the children all live in Southern California. Salvador Reyes. During Mama's pregnancy with Salvador, she started to develop medical problems. Mama was married at a very young age, and giving birth to all the children, her health and survival chances were limited. The doctor said that there were only two choices. Either he saved the baby or saved the mother, but not both. Papa made the agonizing choice that Mama would live. Papa named the baby Salvador, the saving one. I remember Papa and Koyang hand tooled a tiny coffin and lined it with silk and placed Salvador in it. That afternoon, he was buried at the Wailua Cemetery. Papa had to make three trips to get us all to the cemetery. The brief story of the Reyes family is documented here, and only the first generation children of Simeon and Marcelina Reyes are recorded. I realize that there are second and succeeding generations that should be documented. Hopefully as we meet at our family reunions, a complete and up-to-date lineage of the family tree can be realized. This is just the beginning of the Reyes family chain, and it will grow longer. Just remember that the seven daughters and five sons of Simeon and Marcelina Reyes are the roots of the family. Mahalo, Aloha, and Mabuhay. Where?